If your goal is to escape low elo as a jungler in as short a time as possible, then you've clicked on the right video. Today, we'll be breaking down the top 10 best junglers for low elo, and the order in which we place the champions will matter for this one. Every single jungler on the list will be effective, but the closer we get to number one, the easier time you'll have climbing the ranks as fast as possible. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you want to truly get better at League of Legends. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't climb at least five divisions while actively using our service. We do this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Learn more at the end of this video, or click the link in the description below. Coming in at the number 10 spot on the list is going to be Master Yi. Yi is a phenomenal champion for low elo because he scales well and has a ton of carry potential the longer games drag out. You'll notice this is a common theme among many of the champions in the top 10. It's just a fact that low elo games are more chaotic. They last longer than high elo games, so champions with scaling capabilities are often more consistent. Someone like Elise, for example, is a pretty bad low elo champion because she is heavily early game reliant, falls off after a few items, and is very difficult to play for the average player in 5v5 fights. Yi, on the other hand, does not care so much about the early game, scales insanely well with each item completion, and can play fights out in a less mechanically intensive fashion. This is not to say that Yi is completely brain dead, there are definitely ways to express your skill on the champion the more time you put into him, but the base level of skill needed to succeed on him is much less than most junglers. The main reason to why Yi is in the number 10 spot and not higher up on the list is due to the fact that his late game teamfight presence is not as reliable as some of the champions higher on our list. Of course, when it comes down to 1v1s and skirmishes, a master Yi on 3 or 4 items is going to come out on top more often than not. When you get into those bunched up 5v5s is where things become a bit more tricky though. Reliable late game teamfight power is something that was very important to us when ranking low elo junglers. Yi has the potential to pop off in fights, but is going to be more game dependent than most. If the enemy comp has a bunch of hard CC, then it can actually be very difficult to maneuver with Yi and succeed later on. Learning how to min-max, Q, and W usage isn't all that easy to grasp when you first pick up Yi, but it's very important to really get the most out of him in grouped up fights. Taking home the number 9 spot on the list will be Kane. This is more specifically for Red Kane than Blue Kane. Red Kane can be an absolute workhorse in the lower ranks, as his sustained and consistent DPS output is massive for those later game fights. If you enjoy the idea of playing a champion who can be a reliable damage threat while being able to soak a ton of damage at the same time, definitely look into Kane. You don't have the same kind of burst power with Red Kane as some of the other champions we have on the list but his extended fight power is hard to match. Kane is going to beat out Master Yi on the list due to his more reliable team fight impact. Even if you can't get onto priority targets with Kane, the raw amount of disruption he can provide in fights is always going to be useful. Why is Kane at number 9 and not higher up though? Although Kane is a pretty nasty mid game spike, that instant game changing impact is lacking from the champion. The champs we have rated higher on the list generally have higher impact team fight tools that can sway late game fights better than Kane can. Another strong skirmishing jungler with a bit more potential for some early game impact than Kane and Master Yi is Warwick. Warwick may not scale in the damage department as well as Kane or Yi, but his ability to isolate and zone a fed carry is better than both. Oftentimes, this is all it takes to influence games on Warwick. And because positioning is not as polished in low elo, finding access onto that fed carry with your ultimate is much easier than in high elo. Warwick tends to fall off in the later game in the higher ranks as his engage can be quite telegraphed and players can position around that better, but in low elo, it's not as much of an issue. That kind of instant impact and ability to catch targets out is what has Warwick beating out Kane and and Yi for the number 8 spot. In low elo, players are constantly going to be out of position, randomly farming side waves or split from their team, and with Warwick's W, he can close the gap faster than any jungler and punish those positional errors exceptionally well. One adaptation to your setup on Warwick we would recommend you try for the lower ranks is running Ghost instead of Flash. Ghost will allow you to capitalize on enemies mispositioning much better than Flash, and with Warwick's long range gap close from R and movement from Q, he can get away without Flash better than most junglers. The range of Warwick's R is also increased based on his movement speed so there's some built-in synergy there with Ghost as well. Number 7 on the list, and one of the best ganking junglers that you can play for low elo is Maokai. It's really hard to beat the effectiveness of a Maokai Flash W when ganking at level 3. You should burn the enemy's flash at the very least every single time, if not pick up first blood. It's not just the early game impact that makes Maokai so great though, as his mid to late game zone control is incredible. Setting up saplings around objectives that are spawning can be so impactful, especially if the enemy team does not have a tank who can face check into them. The chain CC power and ability to completely isolate a fed carry is much better with Maokai than any of the previous three champions. When you get into those late game teamfight situations, you're always going to be useful with Maokai, which makes him a very reliable jungler pick. If you fall behind early on with any of the previous three junglers, it's much more difficult to be impactful, but you can be behind the curve with Maokai and still out impact the enemy jungler due to his CC. The one thing that holds Maokai back from being rated higher on this list is the fact that he is a bit more team reliant. Although the team fight of the champion is incredibly strong, he is lacking in the damage department, which means you are somewhat reliant on 
your team to be semi-competent. A lot of the junglers we have rated higher on the list do not run into this issue while having great teamfight impact at the same time. One of the best low elo junglers throughout all of Season 13 has been Nocturne, as he's next up on the list. One thing we really like about Nocturne is that he has a very simple power spike and game plan that you can look to execute on in each and every game. Being consistent is the key to being a great jungler and league player in general, and Nocturne enables that better than most junglers. If you're playing someone like Lee Sin, there's so many different ways you can look to approach each game, which for high elo can be a good thing, but if your main goal is to escape the lower ranks, less variance is better than more. The level 6 spike with Nocturne should give you a free kill nearly every single time if you're ganking for a lane that has some CC setup. Later on in the game, there's really nobody better when it comes down to finding that game-winning pick on an isolated carry. The instant impact of Nocturne R is so powerful for the lower ranks, the straight-up 5v5 team fight of the champion may not be as strong as someone like Maokai, but catching a target off so that your team doesn't even need to play 5v5 fights is what makes Nocturne so great. One of the easiest ways to guarantee a fight win is when you take it with a numbers advantage, and with Nocturne R, if you see someone on the enemy team splitting bot and your whole team is grouped top, pulling the trigger and taking that outnumbered fight is so easy to execute on. One of the newest additions to League cracks the top 10 and in the number 5 spot is Briar. Briar is an absolutely incredible solo carry champion as her skirmish is unlike anyone else. Once you reach your 2 item core and have Black Cleaver completed, the champion runs over games. The skill floor of Briar may be a little higher than most champions in this video due to her unique kit, but the champ is just so broken at the moment that even if you're not fully polished, you can still make her work extremely well. Briar checks off one of our most important boxes, having that instant impact ability. Briar's ultimate allows her to enter fights that few other champions in the game would be able to, which makes her so strong for solo queue. It's simply inevitable that your teammates are going to start random fights without you, but with Briar, it's not as much of an issue as you can enter the fight with your R if you think you can swing it in your favor. One factor that holds Briar back more in the higher ranks is that she really struggles when behind. In the lower ranks, there are obviously less good players who can shut the champion down early on, which gives you a much greater chance of scaling into that monstrous mid game. Now, even though Briar's ultimate is one of those instant impact spells, it's not as reliable compared to what the champions higher up on our list have, which is why Briar is in the number 5 spot. Coming in at number 4 is going to be a jungler with one of the best team fight tools in the entire game being Amumu. Amumu has a little bit of everything. His early gank power is solid with his 2 Q charges, level 6 ganks are incredible, and his straight up 5v5 team fight is better than the majority of junglers. Amumu has that swing factor in his kit where with one good ultimate you can single-handedly change the outcome of a game. This is what propels Amumu into the top four, as the champions lower down on the list just don't have this same kind of solo carry potential in later game fights. In the lower ranks, there's often two different ways that games are won or lost. The first is that someone gets picked off before a big objective is coming up. The enemy team is then forced to fight 4v5, and they get wiped trying to contest that objective. Amumu has the ability to find picks with his Q, which allows him to win from this angle. The second way games are won or lost is over a grouped up team fight, and an Amumu with flash available has some of the best impact in those bunched up fights. Making our way into the top three, the third slot is going to go to Lilia. So why do we have Lilia rated so highly and above someone like Amumu? Because both champs have really great teamfight power. Well, what it comes down to is the fact that Lilia can thrive a lot more throughout an extended fight while also having that instant impact. Amumu is more all or nothing. He goes in, uses his ultimate, and then doesn't offer a ton after that. Whereas with Lilia, her consistent DPS with Q and ability to kite around and be a massive nuisance for the enemy team gives her the edge up. Lilia is a jungler who also scales absolutely incredibly with items as the champion can become super tanky while still being a huge damage threat. Leandri's and Demonic Embrace are the only two damage items you need for every game, and from then on out, you can adapt your build extremely well to hard counter the enemy team. Say for example the enemy team locks full AD. Going for a third item Zhonya's and then Frozen Heart fourth will turn you into an unkillable kiting machine. We actually see this happen way more often in the lower ranks as well. Yone and Yasuo are extremely popular mid lane champs, so it's highly likely that when playing against them, the enemy comp will have multiple AD threats, which will be great for Lilia later on. In at the number 2 spot for jungle is the best early game ganker on the list, being Ramis. The catch power, or more specifically, reliable catch power, is something that propels Ramis to the top of our list. Not only are his ganks extremely potent in the early game with Q, but his mid to late game catch power with Q and ultimate sets him apart from all the previous junglers. Even though champs like Nocturne and Warwick have some great pick power, they lack the same kind of early game impact that Ramus provides, which keeps them lower down on the list. In solo queue, it more often than not comes down to which team finds a catch play first, and with Ramus, he can find those picks and execute on them easier than most junglers. With the likes of Warwick or Nocturne, the enemy could just flash away from your engage, but with Ramus, it's nearly impossible to avoid his engage if he's charging at you with Ghost and Q, as his point and click taunt has no 
counterplay other than cleanse or QSS. Rammus also has the luxury of being able to build the full tank while still having decent damage output due to his passive converting armor into AD. As we mentioned when discussing Lilia, lower elos are notorious for having more AD heavy comps as well, which plays into Rammus's favor as he needs to rush that thorn mount. Now, just before we get into our number one low elo selection, let's give you guys a few honorable mentions who were just shy of the top 10. Trundle is one jungler we debated including, however, what held him off this list is his lack of scaling strength and teamfight power. The early game skirmish of Trundle stomps any of the other junglers in the top 10, but since winning the early game and closing games out clean is not as easy in low elo, we valued other junglers who scale better over him. Vi is another jungler who you could argue deserves a spot in the top 10, however the way we see it right now is that she's outclassed by champions who have similar strengths. Nocturne is just the better version of Vi at the moment, and there's really no reason to choose Vi in place of him. Rammus also fills a similar theme to Vi as being that heavy dive champion, but Rammus has more reliable potential to impact the game without being as reliant on his ultimate. In at the number one spot and your ticket out of low elo from the jungle is Shivana. Shivana checks all of our boxes for that optimal low elo jungler. You've got a defined power spike at level 6, which leads to less variance. You've got incredible scaling power, as with every item purchase, the champion becomes even more devastating. And of course, the team fight of Shivana is completely ludicrous, as her E and dragon form can quite literally solo win games. Get Shivana to 3 items, play around her ultimate cooldown, and you are going to climb out of low elo. We actually have an in-depth guide from our challenger jungler Japanese import called How to Instantly Get Platinum that has just been uploaded to our website, and he shows you a blueprint as to exactly what you need to do to climb with Shivana in the lower ranks, so it's a great resource if you want to rank up fast. In patch 13.20, the power of Dragon Souls have been increased, which in turn makes Shivana's late game potential even greater than before. When you get that level 6, if there are no easy gank angles for you, taking Dragon and getting them stacking to reach soul point as quick as possible is a great win condition to play for. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill capped. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. So there you have it guys, 10 of the best junglers that you should be prioritizing to climb out of low elo the fastest. Thanks so much for watching, good luck with your ranked climbs, and we'll see you back soon.